city like this, which has an embarrassment of riches, which has a huge catalogued and uncatalogued uh, uh, list of um, I mean, built heritage, as it were, in that built heritage, you can count literally on the fingers of one hand the women who have contributed to that, right? And Jahara is, is one of them. So for all of these reasons, um, she's seen as somebody who has contributed to Delhi. You know, it's interesting. I think we build myths as we go along. Um, the inscription on the tomb says, let nothing grow here except grass, was to that effect, and that grass is the only covering for a, a mortal like me, which sounds like a very nice and a very sort of humble thing to say. And coming from a princess especially, it seems remarkably sort of self-effacing. And uh, uh, given the kind of elaborate tombs that were being built at that point in the Mughal Empire, hers is a very simple uh, structure and it's open to the sky and just a bit of grass is laid out on the, on the top. I think the fact, as you're saying, that has been appropriated as a symbol of the downtrodden, women especially, this again I think is a part of the myth making that happens over centuries. Uh, here is a woman who was by no means a uh, miskeen, she was by no means a, a poor thing. I mean, she was born into privilege, she did a great deal from that position of privilege. She's seen as, a, as, as, a, as an icon of empowerment for women. Uh, which there's a sweet irony in this, uh, you know, that she lived life within those constraints. Uh, there were uh, a great deal of constraints, even for a Mughal princess, that there were things she marriage being one of them, but there were many other things that she could not do. I think she lived within within con confines, and yet uh, she's seen as, uh, ironically enough, she's seen as an icon of empowerment. <laughs>